In this lecture, we were talking about Raman spectroscopy. In the first lecture, we talked about Raman spect Raman scattering is when the electron radiation passes through a molecular, the scattering of the radiation. We can draw a simple vibrational label diagram. These lines shows the vibrational level. Level zero is the ground level. The electromagnetic radiation can excite the molecular, but when it, uh, but if it can return to the ground level, then it's an uh, elastic vibration, which is relay, generate relay scattering. But if it returns to a higher vibrational level, then it is uh, strokes scattering. Uh, there's another kind of anti-stroke um, anti vibration. This anti-stroke and the stroke vibration can generate a Raman signal, but the stroke vibration, stroke's vibration is uh, the most common uh, for Raman detection. Similar to uh, IR activity, for a Raman detection or measurement, a molecular must has Raman activity. But the important for Raman activity is the molecular after excited by electromagnetic radiation, it can produce polarizability. This polarizability shouldn't be zero at any displacement. That means the distance from the equilibrium state. Let's take two examples. First, we talk about uh, water molecular. In, mole in water molecular, it can has three kind of vibrational mode. It's drawn here. All of these three vibrational modes can generate Raman, Raman signal because the polarizability is, isn't zero at any exciting state. Okay, let's take uh, another example, carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is a liner molecular. We take three vibrational modes of it. First, oxygen atom can compress and tensile. Second mode, carbon atoms move to one side. Then the third, oxygen atoms do tethering or scissoring movement. But here, only the first mode, vibrational mode, can generate a Raman signal. For this mode two and three, the, the polarizability is zero. So there's uh, no Raman signal. There's no Raman activity. Now we introduce some uh, thing about uh, in Raman instrument. Here we mostly talk about Raman spectroscopy which is usually used for materials characterization. In Raman microscope, the components usually contains a laser source 
which is, is a continuous wave laser. It also should have a sample illumination system and collection system. The third component is spectral analyze, analyzer. Uh, and the fourth is a detector to detect the Raman signal. Here we draw a simple diagram. In this diagram, we have a laser source and a beam splitter and a, um, holographic filter. We also have a grating system, a CCD meter, CCD to detect the Raman signal. We have a microscope above the sample. A laser line shining through the sample and return back to the beam splitter and pass through the grating and reach the CCD. Then a Raman spectrum will be generated. But what kind of Raman signal or Raman detection can have? The first is obviously a spectrum like this, but we can also create an image about a two-dimensional um, sample. We may best on a scanning method or a direct imaging method. For scanning method, we will scan the sample line by line and generate series of this spectra. Then we transform this spectra into a two-dimensional image. The application of uh, Raman spectroscopy can be um, face identification for polymorphic solids. For example, we can identify the high oriented graphite and the polycrystalline graphite by verifying the position of the Raman band. Here, let's say this is a band of uh, high-oriented graphite. This polycrystalline graphite should be at this position. So you can identify which is which. We can also use a Raman microscope to um, identify polymers. Uh, it's because Raman is sensitive to polymer conformation. We can also use the Raman to define the composition or identify the composition. We take graphite as example. When you intercalate graphite layers with uh, like uh, lithium ion, then you will see uh, extra band 
of the Raman spectrum. Then you can identify there is some. It is a composite, not a pure material. Raman method can also be used to determine the residual strains by detecting the shift of Raman bands. And finally, Raman can be used to determine the crystallographic orientation of uh, materials. But uh, this method requires extensive theoretical treatment.